she's been sending me emails and she's been blowing up my phone but the good news is that I have a zero dollar payment and I'm going to tell you exactly how I got a zero dollar payment and how you can get a zero dollar payment too. Hi, I'm Shayna of The Wealth Vibe and I create videos to help you eliminate debt grow your income and build wealth and truth be told Sally Mae hasn't been beating down my door or blowing on my phone because I don't have student loans with Sally Mae but I do have student loans with Great Lakes but the great news is that I actually still have a zero dollar monthly payment on my fifty six thousand dollars of student loans and I'm going to explain to you exactly how I got a zero dollar student loan payment on the income driven repayment program and how it's going to benefit me to achieve my goals of being debt free so I'm going to explain to you all of this once you hit the like button and if you hit the like button it's really going to help out my channel it allows my videos to be spread out to a larger audience and spreads the information that we all want to know to improve our finances so we can live our best financial life so I really appreciate it if you hit that like button and now I'm going to get straight into the video and tell you exactly how a zero dollar monthly payment is going to benefit me and how it can benefit you as well. Luckily for me, I entered college with the privilege of having the Bill and Melinda Gates Millennium Scholarship. And that scholarship afforded me the ability to have 10 years of education paid for completely. All I had to do was attend an undergrad and they would pay up to five years of education. And then for grad school, they would pay two years in a master's program and up to four years in a doctoral program if I went into a qualifying program. And I did exactly that. I went to Howard University, got my bachelor's degree, and then I went to Columbia University and University of South Florida where I picked up graduate degrees in public health. And I was able to have most of my education paid for with the Bill and Melinda Gates scholarship. While I was in my master's program, I took out student loans for the first time. Although the Gates scholarship covered my tuition, it wasn't enough to cover my living expenses. So I took out student loans then and then again during two summer semesters of my PhD program. And I graduated from my PhD program in 2017. And on September 25th, 2019, so just a few days ago, I entered repayment for the first time. And the reason why I am just now entering repayment for the first time, two years after graduating, is because I, after I graduated with my PhD, I entered a postdoctoral fellowship. And postdoctoral fellowships, postdocs, are looked at by the government as if you're still in school. So I qualify for a graduate fellowship deferment and it operates the same as if you were still in school taking classes and you don't accrue interest on your student loans. So now the, finally, the day finally hit when my student loans went back into repayment. So as I said, I originally took out student loans in 2009 and now here we are in 2019. Originally, my principal on my student loans were about $40,000. In the past 10 years, I have accumulated about $10,000 of interest. So, of course, I was worried about my student loans, especially since I lost my job in June 2019. So, I still have not been able to secure another job, but student loan repayment was knocking at the door in just a few months and actually now it's here and so I was wondering how I was going to be able to deal with student loan repayment and also be able to achieve my goals of becoming debt free so I looked into some options and I actually got help from someone that I met at FinCon and he helped walk me through the, pro the process of getting onto a student loan repayment program that was right for my financial circumstances the guy that I met at FinCon is actually a lawyer, a lawyer who specializes in student loans. He helps people choose their repayment programs and also address any challenges that they may be facing with their student loans. So based off of our conversation at FinCon, he thought that I might be eligible for the repay program. The repay program falls under the umbrella of income driven repayment programs and he was telling me that under the repay program I would qualify for a zero dollar monthly payment and the federal government would pay my student loan interest over three years. So I was like sign me up, how do I sign up? 
So after FinCon, we got on the phone and he walked me step by step through the process of choosing an income driven repayment program. But during our conversation on the phone, we realized that I did not qualify for the repay program because I had student loans that did not qualify. And under repay, you have to have only, you can only have direct student loans. But I had a mix of student loans that were direct and some that were not direct. And so we looked at other income driven repayment options and I qualified for the income based repayment program. So with the income based repayment program, I still had a zero dollar monthly payment. So I was super happy about that because I was a little concerned about the income piece and being able to pay off my student loans, given that I don't have full time income. Now, although I am working as a adjunct faculty, I'm only working part time. I am not making a lot of money and so I was kind of worried about having to spend a lot of money on my student loans on a monthly basis. But luckily I qualified for the income based repayment program. So I applied for that and I'm good to go. But I started to think like how is this going to affect me in the long run? Are they going to get over on me with all the interest that's going to accrue from this point up on? But I ran some numbers and I realized that I actually might benefit from this in the end. In September, I owed about $56,000 towards my student loans. And that was based off of the original principle of what I took out and all the interest that had accrued over the past 10 years. So when my repayment date was approaching, I was looking at different options for how I was going to tackle this debt. Also given the fact that I didn't really have much income. So I was looking at what all happens when you enter repayment and this process called capitalization actually occurs when you enter repayment. So what that means is that all of the unpaid interest that has accrued on your student loans now gets added to the principal balance of your student loans. So what that means in turn is that you'll actually pay a lot more money towards your student loans in the long run because all the interest is now being added to the principal. So I was looking at my options and I was thinking I don't want that to happen but I had about $10,000 worth of unpaid interest that had accrued over the past 10 years and I didn't have $10,000. So I was trying to think of what I could actually do. So in the past year, I tried to tackle my student loans. And so I actually made a payment of $850 towards my student loans after I paid off my car in May. And so I was looking at that and I was thinking, what can I do to avoid some of this capitalized interest from occurring? And so because I paid about $850 towards my student loans, all of that money went towards interest back then. And it, I remember that the federal government actually has this tax deduction that all the interest that you pay within a tax year actually can be deducted from your taxable income. And so I was thinking that's a win-win for me. And so I looked at my bank account and I was like, I have $1,600 that I can pay to avoid the interest capitalization from occurring and also to benefit me in a tax deduction. So I decided to make a payment of $1,650 towards my student loans to avoid the capitalization from occurring or a little bit of it from occurring and also to benefit me in a tax deduction. Where do I stand now? So now I owe a little bit less than $55,000 after paying that $1,600 towards my student loan. As I mentioned, I was a little worried about having a $0 monthly payment. On the surface, it seems awesome because I wouldn't have to spend any money on my student loans while my income is low. But on the flip side, I would be accruing interest on a loan that has already capitalized and I would be kind of putting myself back. That was what I was thinking. But then I started to think about it a little deeper. When I have a zero dollar monthly payment and I pay a little bit towards my student loans on a monthly basis, all that money can actually be applied to the principal of my student loan. 
and when you have a monthly payment usually some of it is paid towards interest and then some of it is paid towards your principal usually at the beginning of your repayment a lot of it goes towards interest and then a little bit goes towards principal but under a zero dollar repayment program I'm able to if i'm able to pay a little bit of money i can put all of that money towards the principal so it seems like a win-win for me as long as I'm committed to paying a little something. Since I have a goal of being debt-free one day, I also looked into the different debt payoff methods. So we have two popular methods. You have the avalanche method and then you have the snowball method. And I was trying to see which method would actually make sense for me given that I was going to be paying a little bit extra towards my student loans even though my monthly minimum payment is set at zero dollars under the income based repayment program. So I calculated how much I would end up paying throughout the life cycle of my loans using either one of those methods. So in the calculation I used a zero dollar minimum monthly payment and then I added an extra payment of about one thousand dollars. So based off of those factors in the calculation, I realized that under the avalanche method, I would actually save myself a couple hundred dollars. And under both methods, I would still end up paying off the loan at the same time. With the snowball method, I'm thinking that since I don't have a lot of income, it might be beneficial for me on a mental level to actually see some smaller debts get knocked off. So within my large $56,000 student loan, I actually have five individual loans under that, all under the same servicer of Great Lakes. But my smallest loan is about $3,000. And it could feel satisfactory to have $3,000 get knocked off and then have the, the other loans remaining as I work through them. And that is possible under the snowball method. Now if I went with the avalanche method, I would save myself a couple hundred dollars, but I wouldn't get that same satisfaction because I have a large student loan of about $18,000 under that umbrella of you know the $56,000 student loan. So it would take me a while, given that my income is low at the moment, to be able to knock that one out. So I'm still weighing my options as to which direction I want to go, but I do know that I want to pay something extra every single month. Now how much extra do I want to pay? I'm also not sure about that. I am thinking, should I be really aggressive towards my student loans and pay as much as I can? And I'm thinking I probably can pay about $1,000 easily every single month towards my student loans, given that I don't have a lot of other expenses currently. But I'm also thinking that I could be accomplishing some other goals with the extra money that I have. I could be building up my emergency fund and I could also be investing into my business, The Wealth Five, which this YouTube channel falls under. And I'm thinking with my investment into my business, I would get a larger return on investment because I hopefully will make a lot more money than the 6% of interest that I'm paying on my student loans. So I'm kind of weighing how much money I should actually pay. Should I reinvest into my business a little bit or should I not reinvest into my business and put a lot towards the loan or should I split it up half and half? I'm not sure exactly which way I'm going to go, but I do know that one day I will be debt free and having the zero dollar monthly payment is actually going to help me in the long run as long as I'm committed to paying a little bit extra towards my student loans on a monthly basis and I will get there. I will be debt free one day. I'm sure you probably have a lot of questions and you want to know why I didn't consolidate my student loans and why I didn't refinance my student loans and you probably want to learn a little bit more about the decisions that I made regarding my student loans and if you do want to learn more you can catch that information in this video right here and if you're subscribed and you have your notifications turned on I'll be able to meet you in that video thanks for watching